All right, good morning, my pretties. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your instructor for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge this morning. I hope you folks are ready to get spooky. It's our last day of this round of challenges, which means it is costume day, uh, and I hope you are all uh, pleased. <laughs> <laughs> no streaming whammies today. I'm hoping not. Um, I know we had some technical difficulties yesterday morning. Um, and so today I'm going to go through our challenge, but I'm also going to mix in some elements from yesterday's challenge as well, just in case you guys did not see the recording. Hello, hello. <laughs> yes, it is a witchy morning here in Northern California. Um, and we are, we're getting spoopy. Y'all, I hope everyone is ready. I hope everyone is uh, is chilling in chat, getting prepared for our challenge. Today we are going to do the Hillside Manor uh, composite, which I'm very excited about. And if you would like to get involved with me, you can do a handful of things for that. Number one, if you're over on YouTube, please come over to behance.net slash live because that is where I am going to be reading the chat. I'm glad you guys like the costume. I am living for it this morning. I am having so much fun. Uh, <laughs> um, so yes, please come over to behance.net slash live. Um, and you can also go to the landing page for the challenges where you can get all of the information that I have for you um, to get started with me today. And that looks a little something like this. This is behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Um, you'll know you're in the right place because it will say September 28th to October 9th. And if you scroll down here, you will get a little one through four of how it works basically every morning. Um, we will release a challenge to you at about 8 a.m. Pacific time. And then at nine o'clock, which is right now, um, I will be doing the challenges for you so that you guys can watch me walk through um, what the project is and then you can do it yourself. So I am working on today the Hillside Manor composite, like it says, it says combine images to create a haunted Hillside Manor. Try using your assets from previous challenges or the ones in the starter file. Um, you can also join us over on the Discord and post your challenges so that we can take a look. And the Discord link is this right here. And my hat is covering it. Oh no, Ooh, I'm melting, I'm melting. <laughs> okay, so um, you wanna go to bit.ly slash PS Discord. Make sure that P and that S are capitalized so you come to the right spot. Um, that is our link. <laughs> Um, so please join us over on Discord. The Discord looks like this. This is our our server over here. Um, and basically, if you go to the current challenge tab, uh, you can come in here and see what everyone else is doing. Um, you can post your work that you create with me. I see, even though we had some issues yesterday, folks already came in here and did uh, challenge number eight, which was really cool. Looks like we got a GIF here. Oh man, this is this is awesome. Ooh, ooh, this is from uh, from Ted. I'm loving it. I think that's from Ted. Is it from Ted? I think it's from Ted. Um, but yeah, so these are all the challenge entries that folks have posted. Uh, but I don't want to spend too much time in here today because I do want to make sure that we have all the time um, that we need to jump into what we're going to be doing. So we're, good, we're doing a huge composite today. I'm going to be adding in, mixing in some elements of previous challenges. And it's going to take a while. So I want to make sure that we can get to as much as we possibly can. Uh, so without further ado, I am going to jump over here to my challenge entry. Let me pop up on my full screen just to make sure I have the, yes, I do, um, have the proper um, thing up. So this is what challenge number nine looks like. I have our uh, image that we have been working with for the last week. Um, and I'm going to go over real quick um, some things that I did yesterday, and then we are going to um, use content aware fill and stuff to kind of expand this canvas and add some spooky stuff into it, which I am very, very excited for. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this info here. Um, and what I did yesterday um, for like a quick recap is I used my patch tool to remove some things um, and uh, kind of create a better starting canvas for this. So I'm going to select my patch tool um, or you can actually press, I think we have a, 
um, caught key. I think it's, is it, is it, is it J? I think it's, I think it's, yes, it's J on your keyboard. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly remove, um, this pole from our, uh, background. So basically what you want to do um, is you want to circle what you want to remove um, and then you want to drag it over to what you want to fill that space with. So I am slowly getting rid um, of all of this here because I don't want um, my this pole like kind of in the side of our piece here and what I'm doing um, is I'm gonna drag over to like these bits of trees and things because I want the trees kind of blended in here um, so there, there's some nice tree uh, stuff over here on the other side of our canvas which works really nice I'm gonna select um, the side of our pole and I'm gonna line it up um, with a piece of this uh, kind of side of the house over here um, and start kind of piecing that together, which looks pretty cool. I'm gonna grab this part of the pole and I'm gonna drag it over to the side of our house like so. Um, and it's not 100% the cleanest in the world because I don't have very much time today, um, but I'm just going to kind of do like a quick and dirty run through um, of this, uh, this technique. So. Um, I'm going to pull this over into our bushes like that, and I'm going to start making this disappear. It's like a disappearing act. It's actually one of my favorite tools to use because it is so much fun. And you can see that if you really work at um, kind of getting uh, pieces of this, kind of kind of look where you can duplicate areas from your... Um, from your canvas, it actually ends up working pretty darn well. Check that out. That was that was really fast, um, and you can um, get a little more detail oriented um, with some other things like content to wear fill, which I'm actually about to use. Um, if you like, um, but the patch tool for me, um, especially for like the side edge of this image that we are going to darken, um, that is good enough for me. So now that we've done that, what I want to do next is I'm going to extend the canvas and not only am I going to remove the background at the top, I'm also going to extend the lawn at the front of our, um, our image here. So I'm going to hit C on my keyboard and I'm going to stretch this up like so, um, and then I'm gonna zoom out and I'm also gonna stretch this down like that, okay? Um, and what I'm gonna do here um, is I am going to select with my rectangular marquee tool, I'm gonna select this bottom area here, um, and then I'm gonna go to Edit and Content-Aware Fill. Now, Content-Aware Fill is really cool because it basically does what our patch tool did, um, but you can get a little more in depth uh, with it, which is cool. So you'll notice there is a green region selected on my canvas here, and that is basically telling um, my, uh, my Photoshop what it wants to sample and from where. And you can see here in our preview window, um, I've got that bottom part selected and it's sampling other regions of our image um, and it's placing it down in that area. And actually this does a pretty darn good job. We've got more of the lawn kind of brought out here. We've got more of the shadow kind of pulled out here. And personally, I think that this kind of does it for us and we can grab our, um, our, uh, stamp tool um, and or, or a patch tool um, and we can kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, however, if you go to do this with a different image or with the same image but it samples differently, all you can all you have to do um, to kind of clean that up is um, with my brush here I can remove some of this here and it will load. You see how it does that? How it took some of those um, sharp angles from the house sample um, out of the lawn and you can kind of just erase and make sure that it's not taking anything from the house if you get a little too much of that. Um, in there um, and it starts to look actually pretty nice. Um, I'm going to leave it like this and I'm also going to um, note that here for the output settings you can select a, a bunch of different things. You can say output this to current layer so it creates a current layer like this. You can output to a new layer um, or you can duplicate the house and your new content aware, aware fill um, and put it all on a separate layer. I'm just going to go to current layer and I'm going to say apply and then I'm going to say OK. Um, and now as you can see if I deselect I basically have a whole front portion of lawn that works really really well and then I can grab my uh, my patch tool here and I can come in and I can start sampling and kind of pulling other things out. Maybe I want a little more of the light 
uh, there on the lawn and um, there is like some kind of strange sampling here so I'm going to go to normal instead of content to wear fill so I get a nice blend and I'm going to uh, kind of blend out some of these duplicate patterns that I've got in the lawn and you can see here with it set to normal and not content to wear fill it's not going to put this green um, into my lawn here. It's going to sample the texture, but it blends in with the color that it's already um, surrounded by, which is a really nice way um, to get a very uh, clean sort of um, sort of sample. Um, so that actually looks pretty darn good. Uh, same for me, got the pinwheel. Um, can everyone see me? Uh, properly I hope I hope I'm not having um, issues like I had uh, the other morning I don't have any warnings in my stream lab so hopefully you guys can all see me you may if you're talking about um, the pinwheel loading for um, content to wear fill um, what may be happening is it just takes your computer or in your Photoshop a little time to think a little thinking time while you're doing the content to wear fill um, sometimes it does give me like a little thinking wheel as well um, but uh, uh, don't worry, it just needs some time to kind of uh, figure out what it's, what it's doing and how it's going to fill that area. Um, the next thing that we're going to do on this image is I'm going to remove the, uh, the sky here. Um, and so I'm just going to come up to my, um, my selection tools here. I'm going to right click and make sure that I'm using my quick selection tool, um, which is W on your keyboard. Um, and I'm going to drag here and just select my sky like so. I'm also going to um, select uh, around with my lasso tool. I switch to my lasso tool and I'm going to select the top like this whole area here. Um, me make sure I'm holding shift to add to my selection. Um, I'm going to add this whole area, but what I'm going to do here, and this may be a little strange, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that when I select this, I'm going to select with kind of a, 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 a pattern, if you will, or just something that's not just a straight across, across line, because I do want to um, add some different textures in here, and I don't want that line to be directly across the top of the trees. Though, so I just did like a wiggly line, because we're going to add some more branches in here. Um, now, what I am going to do here is I'm going to right click and say select inverse, and then I'm going to hit our masking button down here, which just looks like a rectangle with a dot in the center of it. I'm going to hit mask. Boom. Um, and so now I have my sky removed. I've got like more of a, a, a pattern here around the edge of the trees. And now we're going to add more trees in here. Um, so I am going to right click, come over to our shape tool, which is right up here. Um, I'm going to make sure that when I right click it, I have custom shape selected. And from this drop down menu, you can see there's a bunch of different shapes that you can choose from. I'm going to select this tree that I think is pretty nifty. Um, I'm going to make sure that my fill is on a black and I'm going to drag a tree right into the center here. Um, and then I'm going to uh, hit Control J to duplicate that tree layer, Control T to transform it. I'm going to right click, flip horizontal, and then I'm going to drag some trees into our um, area over here, just kind of placing them around. It's a little strange, but bear with me. I'm going to hit Enter, um, and then I'm going to select both of these trees, and I'm going to drag them underneath the manor, or I can drag the manor up above them. And you can see how that um, kind of continues those trees up. Um, I can double click or uh, select all of these here and I'm going to merge them. Um, or what you can do is you can say create smart object, uh, convert to smart object if you like. And so now this is all one layer and I've got this nice continuation of branches. I can even come back here and grab my shape tool and maybe select in this area. Um, I'm going to rasterize so I can use my uh, patch tool um, and I'm going to put um, some of the green um, into our branches up here that need a little more texture to blend them in. So now I have like it kind of keeps um, the transparency but it adds some more of that green in there. So I actually have like a pretty nice scene going. Um, and lastly I want to add a brand new sky. So I'm going to come over here to my libraries. I've got this Milky Way um, texture here that I think looks pretty cool. I go back to my layers and drag the manor above it. So now I have a sky back there. The next thing that I want to do is add um, some uh, color correcting and things. So we're going to come back to um, our 
photo filter. Um, and if you have a different way of doing this, you can do that too. Um, I'm encouraging everyone to kind of use um, a bunch of the different things we've learned throughout this two weeks. So you are gonna see a lot of repeat um, challenge themes here, but um, I know a lot of you also add into the chat, well, why don't you do it this way? Or why didn't you use this tool? It's totally possible to achieve the same exact uh, effect here with different methods. So feel free to explore and experiment uh, on your own projects. But I love uh, using the photo filter, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure this photo filter is set to a clipping mask over the top of my manner layer so that it's not affecting the background sky. I'm going to set it to a blue, and then I'm going to edit this, uh, this image here. I'm going to kind of bring it up to like a blue. I'm going to crank up the density here. Um, and that actually looks good. Now this time I did not desaturate um, and suck some of the color out. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'm going to make sure I have my manner uh, selected here. I'm going to say control U uh, to open my hue and saturation. Um, and I'm going to bump the saturation down just slightly just so that we get like more of a nighttime scene. Um, and that is looking pretty darn cool. Um, now the next thing I want to do is I want to um, add some of my uh, tombstones uh, because I definitely want tombstones um, in this image. So I'm going to come over um, to my starter file number seven because that is my tombstone that I created for you. Um, and I'm going to drag this layer. If you ever have to drag elements between files, all you have to do is drag your layer over here, hover over the title of the file that you'd like to put it in, and then drag it down into the file once it switches and a release, and it will add the tombstones um, or whatever element you are dragging in. Um, and I am going to control T to free transform, um, and I am going to start placing these into my lawn. That's why I extended my lawn, because I want um, some creepy um, RIP uh, tombstones to be in this uh, scene. What I'm gonna do here is create a uh, shadow layer for this as well. So um, I am going to duplicate this. Oops, oops, oops. Um, I'm, I do wanna duplicate it, however, um, I know that it's gonna break that clipping mask. So I'll duplicate it with Control J, um, and then I will just make sure that this is not on a clipping mask. Um, and that all of these are grouped together so that, um, let me make sure these are, yes. Uh, we'll group those together bah, 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 with control G, I believe. And where is my, there it is. I'm gonna grab my photo filter and bring it up above here and redo that clipping mask. So it's clipped to the group now um, and not to just one single, uh, tombstone here. Um, and I'm going to, with that duplicate tombstone underneath, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize it and I'm going to bring it out here so you can see. I'll hit control U and I'm going to turn down the lightness so that it's totally black uh, here. Um, I am going to uh, control T to free transform and flip it vertical like so, um, and then I'm going to uh, skew it. So I'm gonna hit skew on that free transform thing like that, and I'm going to grab this and kind of skew it. I'll hit control T again so I can transform it regularly, holding shift to make sure it keeps the width there, um, and I'm gonna just drag that out like that. And then the last thing I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to um, come up to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna hit this with a with a Gaussian blur like so. I think um, maybe something a little less, maybe something like that will work. Um, and I'm going to turn the opacity down like so, just to give it kind of a shadow. I'll group these together within the group, and I'm gonna call this uh, Tomb Stone like so. Um, and then I can duplicate this. Um, and I can kind of make these larger as I get closer to my, uh, to my, my viewer, um, if I like. Um, and I think if I had a little bit more time, I would spend more time on it. That seems to be the theme um, of this. But you guys kind of get the idea how I can come in here and I can um, start adding stuff into um, my yard because I have more room in my yard now, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and then like a lot of people did, in our challenge entries uh, that are in the Discord, I can also come in and um, select some of my 
um, my grass and things here and put some dirt in front of our tombstones. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we could do. I could, if I wanted to, I could add a big moon in the back. Um, I don't know if the lighting for this particular image is right for adding a giant moon, um, but since we have a few minutes left here, I feel like we should just put a big dramatic moon back there because why not? Um, it's the last day of our challenge. We're getting spooky. I'm dressed as a witch today, and I don't think the lighting rules really matter if we want to go out with a bang. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a moon back there. But make sure when it comes to um, designing your own um, work that you uh, make sure you you kind of check the lighting and see if um, if a moon light source in the back is going to be uh, right for your piece. Um, but I'm going to put this back here um, and what I might be able to do is hit control I for invert, which works. Hey! <laughs> You could do zombies reaching out of the dirt. You could do a gif of um, of zombies uh, reaching their hands up out of the dirt. That is totally um, a, uh, a a doable thing. Um, and I think the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here and I am going to uh, do an outer glow on this. I'm going to change this to this kind of um, bright color like so. I am going to um, change the size to kind of give it that glow. I'm going to turn the opacity down just a little bit, just because I want um, kind of a uh, like a like a glow around it, but I don't want it to be super overpowering. Um, and then what I can do later on is I can come in with um, some clouds if I want to kind of uh, surround the moon and obscure it into the night sky if I want. Um, there were some really fabulous entries uh, in the Discord where people were putting like really thick fog and stuff along the bottoms, at which point if I did that I wouldn't even have to put dirt in front of my tombstones because I could obscure everything with fog and have just the the, the tops of the tombstones peeking out. Um, and I could also um, add um, some more like atmosphere as far as um, kind of fog creeping in uh, from around the house would be cool. Um, I could return to our Watcher in the Window challenge and add kind of a glowing window here um, and put another creepy silhouette um, in there. And I could also animate this into a GIF like one of our challenges we did for this two week round um, and animate, maybe animate that fog, you know, kind of creeping in and, and twisting and turning around on the ground. I could animate um, the lights flickering on and off in the house and all that good stuff. But this, obviously, um, it's not, uh, it's not a uh, perfect. Um, I see some folks saying, hate to be that guy, Rich, <laughs> but shadow direction on Tombstone and House aren't aligned. You're absolutely right. I only have um, a small amount of time um, to, to do these, so I can't tweak them and perfect them exactly the way that I want to, um, and it's kind of given me a little eye twitch too. This is just kind of a rundown and a quick walkthrough of how you could start compositing stuff so that all of you can take all the time you need um, to kind of create your own scenes and everything. I'm just, I'm just the helper here. <laughs> I'm just here to uh, to kind of show you how to use the tools um, and see what you come up with. I feel like I have seen um, some really, really fabulous entries come in through the Discord. So Rich, I invite you to do the challenge yourself and show me what you would have done. I would love to see your own techniques and how you would interpret this challenge um, so I can check it out. Um, yeah, you could do a blending mode um, SIG, uh, uh, the um, invert. Oh, how did I change the color of the moon? I made sure I had that layer selected and I did control I, which just inverts the colors. Um, so sometimes that's something that you can do. Um, sometimes depending on the colors and the space you're trying to work it into, it doesn't work very well, at which point you could, um, for example, how much time do we have? We have like a couple of minutes. Um, uh, at which point you could do something like, um, let me duplicate this moon. Um, and I'm going to turn the effects off and I'm going to hit control I to bring it back. Um, so you could, uh, uh, come into levels with control L, um, and you could, um, crank the brightness up like so. Um, and then you could go control U and you could start warping the colors like this and kind of change it that way. Maybe make it brighter here and then crank up the um, saturation. That's one way to do it. Um, you could also come up to image adjustments and go to gradient map, which would be cool. And then you could select from all of these awesome um, pre uh, created like iridescent 
uh, gradients um, if you like. You really could do this so many different ways. As I say, there's always so many different um, things that you can do um, when it comes to Photoshop. You can do it in your own way. Um, that was just a quick way to kind of get through it since we have limited time. Um, and it is time for me to take off. Um, I hope that this helps you and is a nice walkthrough for how you can combine all of the stuff that we have kind of gone through for these two weeks of challenges into one final scene. I can't wait to see how you folks um, design your own huge compositing scenes. I know a lot of people have been doing them on their own volition anyways, um, and it's been a blast to see. Um, but I adore all of you folks. I can't wait to be back uh, later this month for another spooky challenge and another awesome cosplay. Um, and I, I wish you guys all well um, and happy designing. Um, please continue to create. Please continue to post and share your work. And I will see you another time. Adios, folks.